Monday, I think we're, we're day five now. And uh, sorry, I'm a little late today, but let's get to it. Um, we have been doing uh, a bunch of testing, test a bunch of test, you know, examples with this, and we're about ready. We're about done with, with chapter one, so let's jump right into chapter one. We left uh, when we left off. We were doing chaining assignments, and you can actually do. This almost everything in C has a return value and not just a function call. In fact, everything's like assignments have return values. For example, if you look at this statement, x equals four, the return value of x equals four is four. Uh, it assigns the four to the variable. The interesting thing is that the expression x equals four itself has a value that was assigned. So it equals four. So why does this matter? Because you can combine an assignment and do cool tricks like chaining them. So you can say y equals x equals four. If you do that, then y and x both equal four. Um, it's just a trick people do. You can remove the parentheses and do it this way too if you want. Um, I don't, that's fine, but it's kind of an edge case. Um, so let's go beyond that. So the short C program, uh, a short C program is listed below. Uh, one block mixes, we're, this, we're all in the, we're doing the assignments at the end of chapter 11, uh, one. So that's why we're jumping right in. One block of the program is missing. Your challenge is, is to match the candidate block of code. On the left without the output. So this is pretty obvious here. So you have include studio, studio dot h int c in x equals zero, y equals zero, y equals while x is less than five, then do something and print it out. Candidate goes here. I mean this is pretty pretty obvious. So while well, x is less than five, print x, y. Match each candidate with one of the possible outputs. Let's see here. Oh, 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 I see. Hmm. Well, let's look at these. We've got, if we put y equals x minus y in here, what would we get? That means y would be x minus y. It means y would be x minus whatever the original value of y was. So it would be one half, right? So let's do that. That would be one half. We would get, um, so it would only be, and then x would increase. Man, this is interesting. I kind of want to run it and see. <laughs> I'm that's the kind of guy I am. I don't I don't like just trying to infer it if I can just run it. Yeah, this this is this is tricky. Let's see here. So y equals. I mean, that's why I use a computer. I don't want to fucking burn my brain by doing the computer. Let the computer do it. <laughs> so y equals x minus y. 22. What is the initial value of x? 0 and 0. x is less than 5. Well, x is less than 5. So it's going to do it 5. So that means it's going to do 5 iterations. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So this is going to be 0. It's going to, it's going to print the two letters right next to each other too, without a space. Oh, I see. why didn't they put a space in between there? That's kind of weird. All right, y equals x minus y. So, x minus y. So if y is zero and, and x, x minus y, so they're both zero, zero by zero would be the first one would be zero. So the first one is zero, so okay, whatever it is, it's gotta start with zero, so it's either this one or this one, or this one. And when it's one, when it's one, right? So when x and when x is then one in the next loop, x equals one. So y equals one minus zero. So it'd be one. So so it'd be zero and one. No, it'd be one and one. One and one. So zero one one. Okay, so it's down to these two. How's it going? We're doing some C coding here. So so that's down to these two. So now when y when x is three. Sorry, when x is 2, when x is 2, y equals 2 minus 0, so it would be 2. So x would be 2, and it would be 2, so it would be 22. No, 21. 2 minus y. y doesn't get set to anything ever. y never increments at all. So y equals x minus 2. So y equals so 0, 0, and then 1, 1, and then... 2 minus 0 is 2, so it would be 
two, two. And then, is there a two-two? I think there's a problem here. It's so much easier to understand and remember than some of the books. That's nice. Thanks for saying so. Yeah. It, we're using the Ed for C book. So, I, what am I missing here? I, I know it's this, and I know it's this, but this one I don't I don't think is it. Because it never adds to it. Zero, Y equals zero, zero. X equals one, one, Y equals one, so it's one. X equals two, plus two equals two minus one is... Y doesn't equal, oh right, y, y equals two minus, why do you think, y, oh, because Y didn't get changed from the last time. Oh, okay, duh, okay. Yeah, I missed that part, duh. So Y didn't get changed from the last one, so the Y is one, so it's gonna be one less than that, so it's gonna be 21, 32, 42. Yeah, or one less, whatever that is. Yes, so that's gonna be this one I'm gonna say. So the first one I'm gonna say is this one. I keep forgetting that the value of y got changed with the, with the assignment and so that we replaced in there. I was like, why isn't the reassignment? Um, okay, so then we have this one, y equals y plus x. So this is uh, y plus x is so zero. So it's gonna be zero, zero plus zero is zero. So the first one is zero, zero. So that's, so that's gotta be this one. And that's easy, because we know that's the only one. <laughs> So this is this is the opposite value. And it actually makes sense too because this is one 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 two one three two. This is one one two three three six four one else okay. So so that's the second one. The next one is y equals y plus two. Shit, that's a little bit harder. So y equals zero. Zero plus two is two. So y equals two. If y is greater than four, no, then we figure. So the first value is zero two. So that means it's either this one or this one or this one. So is it 14? Actually, all of them have 14. It's the next value. All right. So if it's 14, and then and then the next the next value, um, so that the y is two at the next iteration, even though x is still zero. So the next iteration is y is two. So two plus two is four. So it, if if y is greater than four, then y equals y minus one. It doesn't. So it equals four. So the next iteration is going to be two four. Right. It'll be, no wait, no, the first, first version is zero is two. Next one, it'll be two plus two is four. This would be two, four, one, four, right? Because because X gets this increment right here. I, I, I need to see all the code together to understand it. Um, so that would be one, four, one, four, one, four. Those are all the same, that explains that. And then, and then when it's two, when the next way through the loop, it will have been two would be what would it be? So if it, so when it was zero, when it was zero, I can't I can't do it. It'd be two, and this value two, and this two plus two is four in the second iteration, and then the third iteration it's six, and therefore it's going to take it down one, so it's going to be five, so it's going to be. Five, two, four, six. Did you understand variable scope? I don't know. Yes and no. I think it's just to help you think about what loops do and how numbers get aggregated and stuff. But this is hard work for me. This is why I code. I don't like this shit. <laughs> I just write it and then it does it for me. Um, I mean, that's the whole point of the program. So 24th, 26, 36. It's one of these. It's this one, this one, or this one. I think this is the one. It is. Because it's it's the third iteration is six. And so six is greater than four. And so y equals y is six minus one, which is five. So I, so this is it. So that's the third one right there. X plus x equals x plus one. X plus x plus one. So, so that means zero, zero plus one is one. Zero plus x. Uh, which is one is one so one one is the first number so it's either that one or this one uh second round but then x gets an extra one so so the first the first value is actually not going to be one one to be wait the first iteration it would be zero be one 
two. No, one, one. The first iteration is one, one. Okay. The second iteration. It won't be one, one. It will, it'll be. The second iteration, it'll get an extra one. So it'll be one. It'll be two, one. Two, one. So it's this one. I don't need to do the rest because we isolated them down. It'd be two, one. All right. So this one. If y is less than five, if y is less than five, do all the shit. Otherwise, this y equals y plus two. So zero plus two is two. So the first one is zero two. So we have this zero two, this zero two, and this zero two. And wait, did we already do this? Oh, this is another one of these fourteen ones. Well, we've already isolated one of them because this one was this one so it's one of these two so we've isolated that down and 214 so it would be the next iteration y is going to be two and and x is going to be one so it would be one two will be the next iteration and then two plus two is four so it'd be one four so again that makes sense so there's a one four now the next one's the secret one so so the next x gets an extra one. So now it's going to be two four going into it two four. But y is less than five. So it's two four going into it. But y is less than five. So x plus x plus one. So it'd be two. F Did I say two five? I I missed where I was. Why well, starts at less than five though? It does. Oh, you're right. Fuck. Okay, so I start over again. So y is less than five. So this goes on before it even hits the extra one for x. So x was x plus one. Yeah, I'm not. I'm just doing it in my head. So x equals x. X equals x plus one. So that's zero plus one. So x is one. Uh, y is less than that. So it takes one away. So it's it's zero zero, and then. And then y gets two, so y is two, and x is zero two. Zero two, okay. It's still one of these two. And then, and then after that, x gets an increase by one, so it's one something, one four. And then y is still less than five, because when we left y, it was two. So now it's still less than, so x is plus one, so now x is two. So there we go. Except for it's going to take one array. So let's see. So x equals x plus one. So that changes it to two. If 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 y is less than three, which it still is because it's two, then x takes one away. That doesn't make any sense. If y is less than five, I got it. I got it again. Let me do it again. So zero. One so one zero. I have to do that each step. One zero 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 two. Yeah, zero two. And then here we go. So zero two and then x gets incremented. So the first number is zero two. Boom. Beginning of the next loop. X it's it's one two. One two, y is less than five, so yes. Two two. Is this in three? Two two two. One two. One four. Okay, so that's that's what we had. So one four again. All right, let's go back up. Whew. All right, so one four. Plus x gets one, so it's two four. Starting the next loop is two four. So less than five, so three, four. It's not this, so it skips it. So three, four, five, six, three, six. So this is it. All right. Uh, all right. So let's do this one. It's it's two, fourteen, thirty six, forty eight. Um. So that's it. I think we got it. Let's go look at the answers. Oh wait, they're not gonna give us the answers. 
<laughs> Where's the answer to that one? Oh, you're going to make us do it again? Oh, here we go. So this one goes with that one. Okay, we got that right. This one goes with that one. All right. That one we got right. This one. Did we get that one right? Yes. I think we got that one right. This one I know we got right because we just did it. So, all right. There you go. There's the answers. Um, let's do... I, I think we already did the card game thing here. Uh, let's see. Note that... Uh, yay. Note that, not that you know how to create while loose modified program to keep re, re, uh, running count of the card game. Display the count after each card and end the program with display types. Display an error message if the player types a bad card. Shit. All right, they want us to, to do this exercise. I think we already have this code done. Everybody got your code out? Um, I kind of want to make a separate project for this. And what was the one we were doing? It wasn't it wasn't suits, I don't think. The switch case, yeah. They already changed it. We we already have a switch case in here. So we just have to add the other stuff. I I I think we added this already, actually. So enter X's name, enter the card name. So it is count dusty. Okay. Alright, there's our there's our program. And we were going to replace that at one point. We actually did most of this. We did it already, and we already did the switch. We we changed it into switch before they even told us to, which I'm proud of. All right, so val equals 11, val equals 10. Uh, what do they want us to do? If it's x, what is an x? Mm. X means stop. All right, that's easy. So case, are you kidding me? All right, so apparently I went over too far. I could have done it with visual, it breaks, but this is fine. I need a linter. Someone find me a linter for C. I'm doing a space indent, which everybody thinks is fucking insane, but I don't care. I want to be a good C programmer. And that is the Linux kernel style, as far as I know. Isn't it? Indentation standard for Linux uh, C style guidelines. Short Dragon describes the preferred coding style for Linux kernel uh, indentation. Eight spaces. Double indent to the case levels. There you go. Heretical movements that are tried to making them four or even two characters deep. And that is akin to trying to define the value of pi to be three. <laughs> I mean, come on. Doesn't that make you want to do it? Makes me do. All right. So, a character indent. Yeah, it's Linux. C. The format of lock. Yeah, I guess I could try that. Um, it doesn't format it the way I want it, though. <laughs> That's who the fuck decided that standard? Did you see this? No. No. You just read it. If a way to, the, to ease multiple indentation levels is to switch statements to align the switch and its subordinate case labels. Is based on the config? I actually, I really want to figure out how to change that because I would, I would much rather do that. How, how is that done? I have to figure out what linter I'm using. I, I need to take time to do that eventually because I'm gonna, I want to write some more C code and I want to, I want it to look good. I mean, it said, it, it kind of said it was optional. It says, the preferred way to use multiple is to switch statement is to align the switch and its subordinate case labels. 
So. Yeah, no way he's four characters because it wouldn't you couldn't print the couldn't print the book if you didn't. Yeah. Alright, so whatever. We need a case X here. If it's an X, then what? Break. Oh, we need a while loop. I see. Now here's the interesting thing. Now, I know how to do this with the labels, but I don't know if they taught us this yet. Because we're going to need to break out of the while loop. You know what they're going to do? Oh, man. I know exactly what they're going to do. They're going to make it put us in the while loop and then go all the way up to the top. That's lame. That is lame. That's really lame. They're going to make us do this. While, um, card, name, zero, uh, it's not equal X. Hey, thank you for that follow right there, right there. I'll put this right here. Yeah, we're going to do printf current count. All right. So I don't do it very much, but I'm going to, I'm going to do it. Uh, I indented everything. Ah, uh, what the fuck? We'll leave the multiple indent. I don't want it. I want to change that later. This is driving me crazy, but I don't want to have to redo it every time. So we're going to keep it. Yo! Is this some of your yoga stuff? Yes. I don't know if you want it or not. Yes, I do want it. Where did you find it? In my file box. Oh, nice. Nice. All right. Um, what are we doing? So we need... In case we have... All right, so if we get an X... What do we need to do? Well, actually, instead of break right here, we can actually write a, a continue. We can. We can write a continue. That means it, it bump, dumps out, and then we can say, oh, I got a problem here. We say card. Card equals name, card, name, um, I mean, God, we could, there's any number of ways we could do this, but let's just let's set the exact, that'll keep our null if we do this. Yeah. So, uh, I don't need that fucking rust thing in there anymore. Um, what do we got? So, and then what? What there? You need to display an error if the value in, uh, is not in the range 1 to 10. Okay. Uh, you should also skip the rest of the loop body and try again. Okay. Easy enough. How do we skip the loop body, people? How do we skip it? How do we skip it? How do we skip it? How do we skip the loop value? I mean, I know how, but continue. Right? And then we need to check a condition. We just say, is it between 1 and 10? We already know that. So we can do this. We can say, if, uh, and I, this is how I do it, 1 space 10, and I do this. It has to be, between 1 and 10 so we're going to or equal to and then we're going to put val and end val that's my favorite way to do it uh, if it's 1 and 10 then we need to print an error we'd say something like put s um, 
invalid must be between one and ten. Must be one one to ten or something. Do, 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 do. There we go. That's done. And then what? If the value is listen listen to blah, 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 then add one to the count. I think we did that already. Two two and seven. Why did that change? Two and seven. I don't understand. If the count is greater than two and less than seven, so if the count is between two and seven, then add one to the count. Count has gone up. Wait, do we have a count anymore? Oh, we don't have a count anymore. Count plus plus. Yep. Something's different here. I don't think we need that anymore. I don't see. There's no brackets here. It's freaking me out. I'm adding them. I don't care. Uh, otherwise it's gone down. Count minus minus goes down and takes it down one. Else it's the value equals 10. Subtract one from the count. Print if current count is uh, current count <laughs> We're doing print F and account, comma. C code. All right, I think that's it. Let's see if we got it to compile, shall we? Let's see if it works. Um, make count. Oh, oh. First use of this function. Hmm. We didn't de declare the the um, the the thing. My apps because they released the new log for GFX today. Did they? Good for them. Uh, equal zero. So the count is different than the value. Put those next to each other though. Nice to put all that stuff together. Um, continue. Oh, whoopsie. Yep. Let's turn down the music a tad. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. There. That's good. That's good, right? For music. All right. Count. Enter card name. Ace. Oh boy. That was not good. That was an infinite loop. Control C to stop that from killing you. Value equals 11. Break. You know what? We never added the values. Oh no, we didn't. We didn't need to. Oh, gal. We need to put the prompt in there, of course. You see a big mistake? Good for you. <laughs> Good for you. Um Uh card count 0. We're not incrementing the count at all, are we? Um, count plus plus. The value equals to seven. And the value is defined up here. Oh, it's it's remembering what we, the previous value was. We probably need to initialize the value every time. Mm-hmm. 
We need to put this in this scope, right? Yeah, I'm pretty sure that we have to do that. Uh, I mean, it's just, this is for education, so I, I like making mistakes because other people will make the same mistakes as me. Um, current count minus one. Well, that's not good. All right, so what is the goal? What is the goal? Let's like look at the algorithm itself. So the goal is to... Those are 10, 11, X, valid because 8 I card name. Um, also, we need to check right there if the val is between 1 and 10. I think we did that. What? Nice. Parsing a string. Um... Card name, scan F's card name, card name three. Actually, we only, we only need, we only need two for the card name. No, we need to, we need two because of the 10. Oh, this is, this is a problem. <sighs> yeah. I mean, I'll find it. I'll find it. Let me suffer through it. Cemetery character expression. I mean, I know, I know a way to do this. It's probably not the best way. So I could do equals X. You know what? Fuck it. Fuck it. Let's use a boolean. Um, well, not done. You should read anyway. Done. Plus plus. <sighs> That's cool. <sighs> Count. Uh, ace. Then one in ten. It was one in ten. I got an A to I problem. Yep. Let me just check some. I got an A to Y problem. Let me fix this other one first. Um. Oh wait. Oh, this is major logic problem. Major, major logic problem. If val is less than one or um, two, 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 ten. If val is greater than 10, yep, greater than 10. The number is supposed to be between 1 and 10. If val is less than 1 or val is greater than 10. And I see what I did here. I put the numbers in the middle and then I put val on the outside. So it says if val is outside of that range. I thought I was doing an inclusive range for some stupid reason. I could have done a knot and negated the whole thing, but... Hmm. Alright. I mean... 
What else? Uh, X, done. Okay, so. Let's say put S. Goodbye. Count. Ace. Current count minus one. Eight. How about we do one? How about minus one? Uh, three. Current count, five. I have a bad initialization there someplace. I'm going to have to figure that out, but... Doing it in Haskell to be blast. Yeah, you should try it in Haskell. Queen. Uh, the, all the higher cards are taking it down a notch, which is not right. All right, the high cards are taking it down. Checking getting eleven and value equals eleven, and then it says if the value is between two and seven, then increase the count. All right, greater than two and less than seven. If the value is greater than two or less than seven. Else, the value is 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 ten. Decrease count. So skip the rest of the loop. What if the numbers are negative? Hmm. Huh. Return zero. I feel like it's doing what what it wants to do, but I don't understand the strategy. That's the problem I have. I don't I don't understand the strategy of the whole thing. So, um, I mean, let me try that again. Let me see if I can understand the actual game. So, count. Yeah. Pro whatever. If it's minus one? Well, I thought I don't know. I mean, it's like, okay, so 10 is good. Why would it make a negative count? That that's odd to me. If it ten, it takes one away from the count. So there should be that's a bug, because if if the value if the count is lower than zero, it shouldn't be able to go that low. Should it? It's not counting slash something in the cards that I know, but but I think the lowest value can have a zero, right? That's what I was gonna say, but that, but it doesn't, it doesn't say to do that here. You know what I mean? Um, I actually think that's a bug with the problem with the with the with the thing. If count does not equal zero, so. Um. See, I, I don't think we should be able. I don't. I don't know. Is it is it okay for it to be a negative number? Has anybody done a card counter before? I, I know it's not, but but if you were doing if you were doing if you were doing card counting, can you have negative numbers when you're doing card counting? I've never done it, so I don't know. I have a feeling what they meant to say is this. And. Count is greater than zero. That's what I think they meant to say. But I don't I don't I don't know. So I I could I don't know. I don't understand what they're doing. So zero. It doesn't modify it at all if it's maybe I I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Well, let's. I mean, we've got the code right. The code is working the way it's supposed to. So, isn't card counting counting the ratio? I think it is, but I I don't know. <laughs> I've never counted cards. All right. It's in, it's it's just in this head first book. Modify the program to keep running count of the card game. 
Display the cat after each card and end the program with the player types X. Display an error message if the player types a bad card value like 11 or 24. All right, so that's the exercise. I, I feel like we don't need to do that. Does that equal X? See, they did they did what I was hoping to do, but I, I, I tricked it. The negative numbers are allowed in the count. Does it? Okay, well, that, that, that makes sense because then you could say, I guess I'm learning to count cards here. <laughs> I just realized I don't have eskies on. I'm sorry. Count. I have a card name Ace, King, Queen, 10, 11, 3, X minus seven. God, I gotta figure out how to do this. You know, if she's not equal to fixes the indent on case labels. Oh, <gasps> Socratic paradox. You get VIP. I'm not kidding. <laughs> if this works all right so I where did you put that in oh my god I'm kind of excited I'm kind of excited see Hell, I don't even know where to put it. I don't. I'll put it right here. Oh, it's not going to be set options, though. It's going to be something different of a feeling. I'm probably going to have to put it on highlight. I, it's not going to work. It's get, I have to put it in like on auto something else that loads after this because it's going to go overridden. I have a feeling. We'll find out. Oh, shit. Um, uh, nope. Let's see how do you do it? Oh, damn it. Not quite. It's not quite doing it. <laughs> Fuck. Oh, it did do it. It did do it. What? Nice. The whole world has benefited from your efforts. Thank you. But I only care about me. Why are you not compiling? I am very scared. King. Queen. Ace. Why can't I enter an ace? Uh-oh. Jack. Jack. Two. Three. Um. X. I think it works. Let's go see. Let's go see. All right, this one we did, continue, yeah. They just put a continue there. I, I did it the hard way, but that's fine. Um, I mean, that works, but whatever. If if the vowel is listed to this or the vowel is blocked, which we did finally put that way, I don't understand that. Continue, we did that. I mean, the rest of it we did correctly, so we got it. We got it. It's doing, it's doing it. Okay, here we go. Here's what I don't get. Look, four is one. K is the, it doesn't do any negatives. One connected to your stream? Yes, because I have mature content all the motherfucking time. So be careful. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just warning you. 
This is not. I'm drinking brandy. Swearing at 12 year olds on Dota 2. And occasionally we'll talk about boobies or something. So, you know, I'm just saying. I think negatives have to be allowed too, based on the code that we just read. Um, you don't need a slash if you're if you're on Windows. God help you if you're on Windows. We we now check if it looks like a correct card. Yes, the count is increasing. Is that a good thing? Okay, by betting big when the count is high, I made a fortune. This is awesome. Now I know how to count cards. Um, the card counting program works. You completed first C by using C, blah, blah, blah. Great job. Disclaimer, using a computer for card counting is illegal in many states. And those casino guys can get kind of gnarly, so don't do it. You just taught us how, and now you're telling us not to do it? Really? Mandatory disclaimer? Okay, gambling boomer. Um... Otherwise, the count means nothing. Yeah, I was gonna say. Yeah, I think I think the negative has to be a thing. That would not have been my first program. No, that would not have been the one that I would have had you learn. I like it, but it's not the one I would have would have had you learn probably. Um, there are dumb questions. Why do? How's it going, EXE? Why do I need to compile C? Are the languages like JavaScript aren't compiled? So what's up? C is compiled to make the code fast, even though there are languages that aren't compiled. Is the music too loud? If the music's too loud, let me know, please. Even though there are languages that aren't compiled, some of those, like JavaScript and Python, often use some sort of hidden compilation to improve their speed. It's called bytecode. Have you ever seen python.pyc, that shit that's like annoying you everywhere? That's what it's about. By the way, to turn that off. Have you ever seen what it takes to turn that shit off? Oh my god. Crazy, crazy, crazy ass. Look at that. Python, don't write bytecode. Fucking shit for brains, var name. <laughs> but if... Jit pronounced like jit, uh, gif, git. No, it's not. It's fine here. Okay. I just want to make sure the sound, the music, the voice balance is off. And I can't monitor it anymore because I'm, you know, filtering VOD Twitch number two, channel two so that it doesn't get me muted and stuff. And get and get people angry. Don't want those 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 DCMA people mad at you. Um, is Super Plus is just another version of C? Fuck no. Not just no. Fuck no. C++ was really denied as an extension of C. No, it was not. Yes, it was. It was called C with classes. That was the original name of C++. But now it's a little more than that. C++ and Objective-C were both created with the use of uh, object orientation with C. To, and everybody was sad. What's object orientation? We'll we have a look at it in this book. Hell to the no. Object orientation is unique to deal with complexity. We won't specifically look at it in this book. Thank God. Thank your lucky stars. We're not doing object oriented programming. And if you have to do it in school... I pity you. Um, yeah, exactly, Kenneth. <laughs> so I'm so glad the world woke up from this stupor called object-oriented programming, which is really class-based programming. Yeah, I cite Jim Copeland on that particular point, which I've shown on his YouTube videos before. He's, he's a very, very astute computer scientist and... He knows what's up. And I love he call he calls that shit out all the time. I love it. C looks a lot like JavaScript, Java, C sharp, etc. This is actually an interesting question, because it does. Uh, I, I've heard the term C inspired syntax a lot, including for JavaScript. C has a very compact syntax and its influence, and it has influenced many other languages. What does GCC stand for? The GNU compiler collection. I didn't know that. I did not know that. I thought it was code compiler. <laughs> I've been wrong all this time. It's the GNU compiler collection. With C-Lang, eh, if you like LVM, which I don't. 
The only reason you gave me to use C-Lang is if, um, or Clang, some people say, as if, as if I could get off uh, GP, uh, G, GNU, G, GNU, uh, GNU V3, uh, GPL V3. My biggest complaint with GCC is, is GNU GPL V3, which I hate. Uh, uh oh, has personalized instant access. Hmm. Why collection is, is there more than one? The GNU compiler collection can be used to compile many languages, though C is probably still the language which, with which it's most frequently used. Good job, authors, avoiding that dangling modifier. You prefer LLVM over gas, but for 99% of people, that doesn't matter. That's true. Question, can I create a loop that runs forever? Fuck yes, you can. <laughs> I just did. How do you, by the way, how do you stop a loop that's running forever? I'll give you a hint. It's the same keystrokes that certain uninformed Twitch streamers use instead of escape in VI, which produces an interrupt signal. <laughs> Pull the power plug. <laughs> God, kill dash nine. I I should have known. I should have known we were going to get some creative answers on that one. <laughs> oh my God, I'm panicking. I'm panicking. <laughs> oh, it's Control C, my dear friends. It's Control C. Control C. Can you say it again? It's Control C, not Sig kill. Sig interrupt. You can sig kill it if you want, but that's very impolite. That's very impolite. I mean, you want it, you know, you want to treat your computer and your programs to the healthy de degree of politeness. Hence the nice command. There is actually, <laughs> there, you don't believe me. There is actually a nice command. Stuck in an info loop. Colon Q to exit. <laughs> Not kill your program. You just want to interrupt. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Can we say JavaScript? How many times do you use kill to kill something and it turns out to respond as a signature? Yes. Never, never, never happened. Not even once. Uh, I could have swore you put kill dash nine though. Sig kill is, sig kill is a dash nine if I remember right. If you want a little Linux lesson, Unix processes that are running, right? In order to communicate with them, there's a systems of signals, uh, and those signals are sent to the programs through a number of ways through code and the commands that everybody are talking about, uh, kill, which actually was removed from the Christian distribution of Linux, true story, as well as the term daemon. And a bunch of other stuff. I wonder if they kept nice as well, because that's not a... I mean, I'm sure Jesus would like that command. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Go look it up. The Christians made a version of Linux because it was too demonic. It had kill and demons and shit in there. Oh my God. Satan. <laughs> I'm, there is actually a Christian distro. I, you don't believe me. Christian Linux distro. I'm not talking about Temple OS. Ubuntu Christian Edition. Linux for Christians. Computers for Christians. I'm not bagging on you if you're a Christian. I just think it's funny. <laughs> you know, people, I mean, people get found out of shape of all kinds of shit. Master, main, all this stuff. I mean, you know, voice kill with disown. <laughs> I think the biggest thing, because because you know, they saw Berkeley BSD, and the you know, and the, the the mascot is a devil, a little devil. So, just to watch this Linux distro tries to save your soul. I'm not kidding. The Linux distro tries to save your soul. <laughs> Linux to feel specific. Eric Bradshaw and two other Christian computer geeks created the Christian computers for Christ. 
Christians, Linux project, they started a project to fill the need that he had his own ministry. Uh, this is different. That's a different thing. There's actually one where they, they pulled, they changed. I can't remember. It was years ago. Years ago. It was it was in the 90, in the 90s. Um, anyway, so if you like Christ, there's a distro for you. God bless. Free and open source. <laughs> Master Litz, how are you? Welcome. <laughs> Jesus sex looks great. <laughs> Dude, I'm telling you, there is a distro for everybody. Back to what we were doing. Uh, oh shit. I, I I failed. I failed. I'm gonna fix my failure. I killed my, my blank pain too. I, I know, I know, I need to write a little script that does it. I know, I know, I'm not there yet. Give me a break. Chapter 01. Okay, we did our count. That's the, where are we? You want to make a distro for making fun loops? Yes. Demons are called angels there. I, is that, I don't even know. I think they call them angels. Angels and demons. Go to a fish. That's not religious as far as I know. Go to the fish. You guys don't know about go to the fish, right? I don't know what to go to the fish. Are you a fence sitter? A fence sitter? There are fence sitters. Interesting verses. Oh, what is this verses? Is this verses tell your computer? Does your computer choose a go to the fish? Very interesting verses. Interesting verses. Um. Is it a good idea to create a loop that runs forever? Now, that's a trick question. The answer is actually yes. You can't have a game without, event, without a loop that runs forever. Mm -mm. You have to have a loop that runs forever called the event loop. It's actually a pretty common thing. And it's asking all the time, did somebody do something now? Did you do something now? Did you do something now? Did you do something now? You, most games, all games actually, are running in loops. Your computer itself is one big fucking loop. It's one big fucking loop. It, while it's running, while your computer's running, it's running one big fucking loop. And it's asking questions all the time about what's going on. And the kill command is, send to hell. <laughs> Way too long to type. They should change kill to damn. I don't even think the Christians are upset about all the fingering going on in the 1990s. Oh God, yeah. There's fingering and hupping going on and it was, it was, you know, it was a wild time. <laughs> Thou shalt. <laughs> if you were fisking, yeah, we were fisking and humping and fingering. If you, there's some really crazy, crazy uh, fiction written using nothing but Unix commands. It's pretty damn funny. There's t-shirts too. There's like t-shirts like, hey baby, you know, it's like, it's horrible. That's probably, that's probably what spawned the Christian movement against it. <laughs> All those demented daemon users. Can we move on? Okay. Bullet points. Look, this is what I told you. It's a mature stream. If you're watching this and any of that offended you, it's your own fucking fault. Go away. We love you. We do. We still love you. You can stay, but I'm going to talk the way I fucking want. And that means I'm going to swear because I didn't do this for eight years because I was a teacher. I dealt with nine-year-olds. I couldn't swear in front of them. Now I can. So there. <laughs> I, I fisk my primary disc. I fisk my primary disc. What are you, Shakespeare? Somebody, somebody turned that into a joke. You just get in skin cell. Somebody named skin cell is going to have any, not have any problems here. <laughs> I'm a Christian. And I don't feel offended. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you, Lord rubbish. Thank you. You know, we don't, you know, <laughs> self edits slash me self edits. Okay. Bullet points. We're done with this chapter. We're done with chapter one. I think. Uh, a while loop runs code as long as its condition is true. Got it? Dual while is something you should never fucking use. Got it? Don't read that. Don't ever use do while. Don't do it. Just don't do it. Don't do do. 
<sighs> okay. Uh, the for loop is a more compact way of writing certain kinds of loops a rando on the internet, so I could be anyway. Exactly. I am also a rando for whom you know the address. <laughs> Which is kind of sad and scary, but whatever. Uh, I will have done my part contributing to the world. Uh, the for loop is a more compact way of writing certain kinds of loops. Yeah. Does anybody remember my 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 couplet? My little mnemonic device there. It'll make me very happy if you remember it. Anytime, any loop at all, any loop in any programming languages, if if you want to remember it, remember init check change, init check change, init check change, init check change, init check change until you're so fucking annoyed by Mr. Rob. Init check change. They all have init check change. Every single one, whether it's a for loop or a while loop, you just have to find the init check change in there someplace. There's an initialization, a check for a state, see if something's true, a condition, and then there's a change. Someplace in the loop or right in the for line, it's going to be, it's going to tell you to change. Init check change. Uh, you can exit a loop at any time with break, but you can't exit an if statement unless you want to take down AT&T. Run until, no, stop, stop. Stop, Maluba. We agree never to talk of it. Uh, you can exit. How are you doing, by the way? Doing good, I hope. Can you exit a loop at any time with break? Yes. You can skip to the loop. Can, you can skip to the next condition. You can jump up with continue. There's no mention of go to here, even though you'll see that in some high level code. Uh, don't use it unless you know what you're doing, but it's in this, this list as well. Uh, the return statement, they didn't talk about it. It's actually a go thing. I mean, a, go, a C thing and a go thing. The return statement returns a value from a function. They also didn't take. They didn't also didn't take about talk about breaking specific um, nested loops, and I I hope they get to that because that's really important. If they don't talk about that, we definitely need to talk about that. Remind me, if they don't talk about breaking out of nested loops, because break only applies to the inner loop, and if there's a loop inside of a loop, break will automatically assume, I believe, the inner loop. Um, Christianity is not a religion, but a philosophy, so I don't understand them talking about the rules of shit. Okay. All right. We'll, we'll, we'll put a thumbtack in that one. Uh, void, void functions don't need return statements. Nice. Every time I see the word void, I think of faceless void in Dota 2 now. Who also looks like the mouth in, in the cutscenes from Lord of the Rings. Return of the King, specifically. Um... Most expressions in C have values. Okay. Uh, assignments have values so you can chain them together. So something gets smushed together and the thing that's left over is the value. All right. So that's an assignment. Value. I think I think we're about done with this. And that's a nice, healthy, healthy happy time. Your C toolbox. You got chapter one under your belt, and now you're a added C bases to your toolbox for a complete list of tooltips. Here, see the list appendix two. Simple statements are commands. Block statements are surrounded by spaces, braces. I call them curly brackets. Uh, I used to say braces and brackets just to keep everybody clear, and then I realized nobody knows what the fuck I was talking about. Um, <laughs> go to debug hell. Um, I call these curly braces um, or fences. They they get called fences a lot. Braces and brackets, right? It's it's you gotta it's when you're trying to teach, it, you kind of gotta be precise in your language. So rather, I I've gone back and forth on this a lot. I used to say braces and or brackets. This is braces and that was brackets. And rather than that, I've gotten more precise now, and I use double words for it. I'll say square brackets or curly braces, or curly brackets, but usually I'll say curly braces, or curly brackets, or, or, or you know, parens, or, you know, things like that. Switch statements uh, efficiently check for multiple values on a variable. Every program needs a main function. Curly boys. <laughs> mustache. People say mustache, yes. I really like that for series, for the main reason... Uh, uh, wait, wait, how how bad is your rally? Did you start with O'Reilly recently? O'Reilly in the '90s is not the same as the O'Reilly in 2020. I'll tell you that right now. I I personally like the Head First series because it's based on science. It's based on the science of memory. 
And I've talked about this before, but competitive memory people, the sillier the better when they go to memorize, you know, the value of pi out to 100 characters or something. They'll make a, a really crazy ass image in, in their mind that associates with every number and they can remember the story they've made for themselves and then they can recall the story and as they do, they can pull up the number because that's how your brain works. Your brain is all about stories. It's very linear. It's it's very, you know, story, all about the story and, and that kind of thing. So I like it. I like it. I, I've had a lot of success with these books with particularly young people and old people. Um, and they don't they don't skimp. The head for C book goes down goes pretty good into detail. It's got some errors. Uh, and it wastes a lot of paper <laughs> because you know it's all pretty. But other than that, I don't I don't dislike it. I, I I've got a very different experience with the Riley books. When I started, I the first book tech book I had was in a Unix Unix in a nutshell. I still have it somewhere, first edition. It's probably worth a lot of money at this point. Um and and I I I I, I made a deal with my manager when I was at Nike to, to let me, instead of sending me to a $2,500 one week conference to do some sort of dumb Oracle training to give me half that money, let me buy all the books. And I bought, I had a wall of O'Reilly books, read them all. That's, that was, that's how I got my education while I was doing it. You just toss your Chromebook. You just to, toss your Chromebook. I've had a hard time not tossing mine, but I, I've kept them. I'm not going to, it's hard because they're big and they're old and you know, but they're, I have so much sentiment. The Unix one I'm not throwing out, even though it's completely irrelevant. Uh, 2000 ish, yeah, yep, mm -hmm. 90s. I bought all mine in 96, 96, 97, something like that. So, and I did. I had a full fucking wall of them. It was beautiful. It was absolutely beautiful. And I bought TCPIP Illustrated and all this stuff. And I just read, 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 read. I did public transportation. If you have to travel, if you can't work from home, if you have to travel, do public transportation. Take a book. I still get giddy every time I see a bus. Because a bus to me means, oh, I get to nestle in the corner and stay all nice and toasty warm and listen to my music and read a tech book. And, and just do that. It was like one of my most best memories of Christmas. I could like look out the window and watch all the Christmas lights and sit there all nice and warm with my, you know, sometimes I get a uh, hot chocolate or something because I didn't drink back then. And, and I would just read my tech book on the bus and I would like get all nestled in until, and I would have to I'd get, sometimes I'd fall asleep and miss my stop. My wife would get mad at me. I still, I still get giddy when I see a bus or, or a max or a tram or anything like that. Now I know not everybody has that experience, but for me, public transportation was, was my learning time. So I got to sit down and just really soak the book in. I just love it. I love it. I really miss it actually. Cause it was kind of an, a set time you had to do it every day. Very interactive and experimental. Yeah, me too. But, but, but the Riley books, I could at least think, think through them. So yeah, I, that's, what, that's what I would do. I would actually take a piece of paper and I would read the book and then I would like write RWX, right? Write, read and write. I would take the, the W and I would try out some different things and experiment without my computer. Sometimes I bring my laptop, but I was ne it was never as effective. When it, whenever, at the time, by the way, laptops kind of sucked, but but bringing a laptop, uh, reading on the bus to make you throw up, some people can't. They really can't. I've learned this the hard way. I learned that some people cannot, they cannot get into their, to their bus trips and stuff like that. It's too bad. Because I, I really, really love it. Uh, Subway is where you read absolutely. And, and I remember that. Actually, when I go to, my favorite thing to go to New York, actually around this time, we would go to New York every year. We might start doing that again, actually. We would go back to New York um, every year. For a long time, we would go back, we would go on vacation to New York. And and my favorite thing to do in New York around Christmas is to just go to a coffee shop. With COVID, it's hard to do this now. But it would go to a coffee shop and just sit there and code. Just sit there and code and read and just soak in the ambition. I mean, it, it, New York is just s dripping with ambition. When you go there, it just, it just, for some people, it's not the same effect on them. But for me, it just really powers me up. It really, really powers me up. It makes me want to make something. It makes me want to change the world. That's my favorite part about New York. I like the lights and everything and the, you know, Broadway and all that stuff. But when I go to New York, I want to go to Lower East Side and just hang out in some chintzy Chinese place or, 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 or actually, we used to. Um, there's these Sikhs who made this, these great. Oh my God, these great, great lentils, and just to just soak it all in. And I love it. I love it. I miss it actually. Uh, driving school with bus. Is there more of the way reading books than at school? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Reading right now from O'Reilly about VI from 1998. Yeah, uh, I'm wondering if there is something that the new with books submit. So just, yeah, the new O'Reilly books are not nearly the same. For for about the last decade, O'Reilly has really gone tanked. 
it's gone really they have their their editor level of quality has gone really far down i've bought several i bought several books from o'reilly since then and read them um head first go is fantastic it's just so fucking out of date it's actually dangerous at this point don't buy it don't buy it don't buy any book about go listen to me carefully maybe learning go the one that just came out because it's not so specific to the version don't buy any beginner book about go until 1.18 comes out because generics are going to change everything the modules are locked down finally in 1.17 so any books that have that in them are going to get it right it is so important as a beginner that you learn 1.17 or greater and when 1.18 comes out it's even more important uh they found another one holy cow community go get started yeah Yes, and the, the GoDev people are there. You need to compile uh, your C program before you run it. You can use the and and operator to command line for run if it compiles. If same as run code if something is true. Include includes external code for things in input output. Like input output, you can use and and, and bar bar to, com to combine conditions and or nor. GCC is the most popular compiler. What the other one is Clang. We were just talking about it. Uh, your source file should have a name ending in dot C. Hey Zet. Zetsubo, what a name. While, while repeats code as long as a condition is true, do while loops run code at least once. For loops are a more compact way of writing loops. Uh, your source file should have a name ending in .c. We did it. Count plus plus means add one at the end. Count my minus means or subtract one. Always put those on their own line, by the way. And we'll, we'll get into that another day, probably. But it's really safe to do that. Go requires it. Uh, it can get tricky because you can put plus pluses in front of count which is crazy. I, I don't want to talk, even talk about it. It just changes when the number gets added in a confusing way, particularly for beginners. So just put it at the end and always put the, always put a, go, a count plus plus or a count plus minus on their own line and you'll be fine. Uh, you don't have to even think about it. Yeah, don't, don't mind sigh. Don't you dare. Yes, it does. It does have the initial ones. Yeah. So if you put it in front of it, it adds it before it evaluates, which is a slightly different thing. Hey, forgotten VCR is on. Cool. Uh, two memory. Wait, we're in chapter two already. So that's probably a good time for us to start to end tonight. What time is it? Is it nine thirty? Do we go over? Oh, look at that. It's nine thirty-one, and I was ten minutes late today. Um, but I think that's a good time for us to end. Um, go back and play with that stuff, that content, and uh, do what you can on that. Um, and you know, if you have questions, we're here. Uh, there's a C. There's a C. Uh, there's a C channel in the Discord. Uh, but most of the time you can just come in here and ask. We're going to, we're going to be doing C stuff every night for 90 minutes, um, uh, until this book is done. So this is where we are, by the way. And we just, we're on chapter two and there's another few chapters. The chapters progressively get a little harder as we go. Uh, there's more to do in them. I, I want to say so, and then they have these labs coming up too. The labs are cool. Labs are really awesome. That's where we actually make stuff. They don't even tell you how to make it. They just say, go make this. Uh, so we'll be able to help each other out there. And then they have the appendices. Appendices, is that how you say it? So we have, we have, this is what we've done. We've done the intro. We've done chapter one. All right. Uh, I'm going to keep talking, but I'm going to reset the stream here. Uh, what are you guys arguing about? If you wrote C book, it'd be called Deep Sea. <laughs> Oh, God. Import data dictionary. Oh, my God. All this great stuff. Discord, you have to go to the about page. Yeah. Yeah. I don't have any any robot-like things yet. I may set those up over the weekend. This is the things I, I mess around with my stream on the weekend.